Our 2024-2025 season previews will continue on today with the Florida Panthers. So, the Stanley Cup champions from this past year, back-to-back -back Stanley Cup finals runs, President's Trophy winner the year before that. Unreal. They have been an unreal team the last three seasons. They have always been making the headlines. And this comes after what was essentially a decade of darkness, kind of like the Oilers. So, the Panthers in 21-22 went 58-18-6. For 122 points, they were first in the NHL. They won the President's Trophy. They ended up losing in Round 2 to the Tampa Bay Lightning, who at the time were that other dynasty in Florida. You might have, I don't know if they're a dynasty, but they were that other really good team in Florida who before then won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups and defeated the first-place Panthers en route to a third straight Stanley Cup final. But Florida, they would answer back the following year, even though they got substantially worse. They made the massive game-changing trade, Jonathan Huberto and Mackenzie Wieger to the Calgary Flames in exchange for Matthew Kachuk, and this changed the franchise. Changed it. In 22-23, they were 42-32-8, and for 92 points, they were 17th in the NHL that year. They barely scraped into the playoffs. And by barely, I mean barely. Like, you think that Detroit and Washington and Philadelphia and them were close this year? Florida barely scraped in that past year. And they went en route to a cup final where they were injury depleted and still lost to the Vegas Golden Knights. But it seemed like it was motivation for what came the following year. They went 52-24-6. For 110 points, they were 5th in the NHL that year, and they won the Stanley Cup. So even though they did go out 3-0, blew that 3-0 lead, they still won Game 7 and held up the Stanley Cup. It was an unbelievable year by Florida, an unbelievable final, as I said last, last um, preview with the Oilers. Uh, overall, incredible run. It was an incredible run. Now, the team is focused on doing it again, going to, going for a back-to-back, -back, and it's going to be a lot harder. Some of the departures that left this past offseason, Brandon Montour, Oliver Ekman Larson, Vladimir Tarasenko, Anthony Stolarz, Kevin Stenland, uh, Ryan Lomberg, Nick Cousins, Josh Mahura, and Kyle Ocpozo. So, first off, a lot of deadline players like Ocpozo, Tarasenko, etc. Lost your backup goalie in Stolarz, lost two defensemen in Montour and OEL who I wouldn't say were big pieces. Montour definitely was. But overall, it definitely does affect their blue line a lot. Uh, losing Stolar is your backup goalie. Stenland, Lomberg, and Cousins just kind of deaf. Um, but overall, the team definitely got a lot worse. The guys they brought in, A.J. Greer, Jesper Boquist, Adam Boquist, uh, Thomas Nosek, Nate Schmidt, and Chris Drieger. So Drieger gets his return to Florida after being there a few years back. Uh, you got the Boquist brothers. Not sure how that chemistry is going to flow, but I guess it's got to be kind of cool to be playing on the same team as your brother. Uh, apart from that, just some deft guys. Nothing really too big. That's all they could afford, to be honest. They signed Reinhardt to an extension. Um, that's about all they could really do was kind of just go out and get some deft pieces for the future. So when you look in terms of the projected lineup, it's definitely not what it was in previous years. It's definitely gotten a lot worse. But by no means are they not a contender still. Uh, so your first, your top six, Carter Verhage, Alexander Barkov, Matthew Kachuk. Second line, Evan Rodriguez, Sam Bennett, and Sam Reinhardt. So it's a pretty good top six. And it's the same top six that was in the playoffs. It's very good, to be honest. I mean, I shouldn't really have to say that much. Reinhardt had a great year. Again, as I said with Zach Hyman, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him regress a little bit. Not saying that he will be bad next year, but it wouldn't surprise me if he kind of falls back down to earth. Um, the rest of them, Kachuk, Barkov, for Hagee, all great first line. It's terrific. I don't even really think I need to say that much, to be honest with you. You guys know what Florida can do. You guys saw them in the playoffs. Your bottom six is where it's, uh, yeah. Uh, you have E2 Lostranen, Anton Lindell, and Mackie Samuskovich as your third line. Then you got John Gajovic. Uh, Zach Dalp and Thomas Nosek as your fourth line. Then for some extra guys, you have A.J. Greer, uh, Jesper Boquist, and Will Lockwood. So, again, bottom six, way weaker. 
There's no doubt about it. Uh, Sam Skovich, I'm really excited to see because he's coming over from Michigan. He is your best prospect. So it's going to be exciting to see what he's going to be able to do with this Florida Panthers team. Playing probably third line minutes right off the bat. He could perform really well and end up backstop in Florida to yet again another playoff run. It's, it's possible. But again, with that top six, I'm really not ruling anything out. The bottom six may be weak, but the Panthers know that you know they can definitely build some good bottom six guys in there. And again, I would say the top nine is pretty good. Apart from that, it's just a little, eh. Now, their defense did get significantly worse. You have Forsling and Ekblad as your first pairing. Kulikov and Mikola as your second pairing. And then Schmid and Boquist as your third pairing. And then you have Bolinskis as your extra defenseman. Yeah, it's weak. It's way weaker. Losing Montour, honestly losing OEL are losses for this team. I think the top four is good. Third pairing is a little bit concerning, but it's still definitely weaker. Losing Montour really hurts. First pairing is terrific. Uh, Kulikov I like a lot. I like Mikola as well. I just don't know if those guys can fit in making second pairing minutes. We shall see, though. It's, it's possible that I'm wrong, and that could go the other way. But again, their defense, you can't argue it. It got a lot weaker. Uh, their goaltending is still very solid. You have Sergei Bobrovsky and Spencer Knight. Hopefully Spencer Knight can stay as that permanent backup. I know he struggled in a few years prior and, you know, has obviously been struggling as recent date. But anyways, I think that definitely this team can win, a, can win another cup. Absolutely. Uh, three straight trips to the finals. It's going to be difficult, but I'm not ruling it out. I think it's definitely very possible. This Panthers team knows what they can do. They know how to play. They know how to win. I think, to be honest, that pretty good chance at them going back and getting a second straight Stanley Cup. So looking at the Hockey News' yearbook and fantasy guide, it has their cup odds at 13-1. to 1. Uh, They are projected first in the Atlantic. And their biggest X factor is that the Panthers have the core in place to make another run at the Stanley Cup. It's just a matter of whether their depth and power play can withstand the losses in free agency. Forsling is a wild card on the power play, while Lundell will need to carry Florida's bottom six for them to be successful. And again, that is true. Lundell, probably the best player in that bottom six for Florida. He's going to need to really carry it this coming year. Forsling, again, is going to need to take another step. Um, I don't know if, like, I don't, know, I don't know if I should say step, but he's definitely going to need to follow up what was a really good year last year. So, again, you're looking forward to that. There's a lot of things that you that you can look forward to. With Florida, they obviously just won a Stanley Cup, and why not do it again? So again, the Panthers looking very exciting. A lot of the things that I've been saying, I, I really don't even need to say. This team is a Stanley Cup winner. We know what they can do. They're going to be entertaining to watch this coming year. It's, it's without a doubt. Do I think that they regress a little bit? Yes. I don't know if I have them first in the division. I think they will definitely be top two or three for sure. But first in the division, I'm a little bit eh on because honestly – the team on paper did get a lot worse. And, it, and it's without debate, the team on paper is definitely not what it was uh, at the start of last season and losing those deadline players and not having a lot of future assets and overall just draft picks as it is. It's going to be difficult for Florida to kind of, you know, put together a legitimate, um, you know, trade in the trade deadline. But obviously, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Kind of rambled there for the last minute. I apologize. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe down below. They appreciate it. Tomorrow is the LA Kings. By the way, these last couple of videos have been pre-recorded. So if anything happens that isn't mentioned in here, probably because it's outdated, but I do apologize for that. But I'm going away for the weekend. I have to record videos. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.